Well, we've got two final topics to cover for section 1.4, and those topics are depreciation and budgets. And below you see my artistic interpretation of what these words probably mean. On the left, depreciation is kind of the opposite of appreciation, and so you know how there's like Teacher Appreciation Day and Sanitation Worker Appreciation Day. Well, apparently these two people are experiencing Depreciation Day. So that's unfortunate for them, but life goes on. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, I'm pretty sure that budgets are a weird sort of baseball bat that, like, has these little slats in between that could hit the ball, but, like, there's all this empty space in between the slats, and so it makes it really hard to hit the baseball unless you actually manage to use one of the slats themselves. And it makes it more challenging for people who um, are already really good at baseball. And these are called budget bats. And because we're talking about not a single budget, but in fact budgets, that's why you see multiple of them. I think my idea makes perfect sense, but sadly we're going to be talking about a completely different interpretation of depreciation and budgets. So hold on to your hats. First thing we want to talk about is this. Depreciation, in the mathematical sense, is value lost over time. So here's a good example. There's a newborn baby, and it's all pink and whiny and disgusting, and somehow its parents decide that it is worth 162 cute points. That's a lot of cute points, people. Now here's the thing. When it's a newborn, it's worth this many cute points, but its cuteness depreciates. And so that, in particular, means that it loses cuteness points as time goes on. We are also told that its cuteness depreciates linearly, and that's just fancy math talk for saying that the equation we're going to be using is going to be a line equation. We're also given the fact that it's worth 126 cute points at age 4. All right, then they go on to ask the first question. I don't know why I'm saying they, because it's actually me. I'm writing these problems. I go on to ask the first question, find the formula for this baby's cuteness as a function of time. All right, so let's move off to the right-hand side here. And we're going to do the usual thing. We're going to find the function, but the function's a line. So we need point and slope. Well, we have two points, actually. More than a point and a slope, we have two points. The two points come from the fact that in the beginning, when it's a newborn baby, when it's brand new, it's worth 162 cute points. So here's how we turn that into a point. The beginning always means the time is zero. So our first point is going to be 0, 162. So if there's ever anything that happens in the beginning, and if you're sure that your x values are in terms of time, then the original x value is just 0. Now let's actually take a second here and make sure we're cool with that, that the x, for, uh, the x value is in terms of time. But look here, it says, find the formula for the cuteness as a function of time. As a function of time, this just means x equals time, and then, of course, y has to be what the fun function value gives you, which is cuteness. All right, so x is time, and the starting value for time is 0, so our first point is 0, 162. Our next point is going to be the fact that it's worth 126 cuteness points at age 4. So we're going to go back over here, and we're going to say time is 4, cuteness points is 126. All right, we need a point and a slope. We have two points, so let's calculate slope. And we're going to do um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And of course, as usual, it doesn't matter which point you choose to be your second, which point you choose to be your first. As long as you're consistent about it, you're going to get the right answer either way. Simplify this puppy, and what do we get on top? Looks to me like negative 36, 4 on bottom, and that simplifies to negative 9. All right, now we've got a slope, and we have a point. Let's use the easier point, because it involves 0. And we do the usual thing. y equals negative 9x plus b. And now we'll plug in the point. Um, 162 equals negative 9 times the x value 0 plus b. Multiplication by 0 kills it, and so b is just 162. So we've got our slope. We've got our y-intercept. We bring that all the way back here. Um, I'm going to erase that line so i got more room to write. And our formula for its cuteness, we can write cuteness of x is equal to negative 9x plus 162. I probably should have left myself more room to write that, but 
you guys can deal. Hopefully, yeah, that's legible and everything makes all the good sense. All right, so you've got its cuteness function. The cuteness function is negative 9x plus 162. And now part B says, at what age it's, is all its cuteness gone? Well, if all the cuteness is gone, obvi, obvi, people, that means that cuteness equals zero. So really what we're asking is, what is the time value, what is the x value, where c equals zero? That means we're looking for this equation. We set c equal to zero, and we solve. Um, let's move the 9x over. 9x becomes positive now, equals 162. And then divide by 9, and you get x equals um, 172.8. 18. Hey, what a coincidence. At age 18, all of your cuteness is gone. Well, that's just tragic. Guess that means you better learn some math, or else you ain't worth much in this world, are you? No, sir. Age 18, all downhill from there. And the moral of the story is that if you're this horrible little shrieking raisin that doesn't know how to clean up its own poop and looks like a cross between a midget and an old man, then you're super adorable. But if you can actually more or less take care of yourself, that's not cool at all. Don't know how that makes any sense, but let's move on. Dudes, that is the end of depreciation. Depreciation is a pretty easy concept. You're basically just going to be coming up with an equation for a line and then figuring out what happens at various points. So now we're moving on to a little something I like to call uh, budgets. Yup, this may look like it's about zombie Superman, but no, it's about budgets. So here's the thing. Um, Superman goes and gets himself bitten by a zombie because he was never very bright. And now all of the various political factions are trying to decide what to do. So they go for their usual approach which for the Republicans is guns, guns, and more guns. Guns work great on zombies, guns work great on Superman, and so if there's anything that guns are going to work fantastically on, it's going to be zombie Superman. Way to go, Republicans. You win again. How about the Democrats? I bet they've got a good idea. Oh, let's give him hugs. All zombie Superman needs is hugs. Congratulations, Democrats. Now we're all going to get eaten, and it's all your fault. Well, it looks like nobody's happy, but we're going to go ahead and go with some sort of hybrid Republican-Democrat problem. So we're going to be both making guns and making hugs. And the problem, people, is this. Guns cost $1,000 each. Hugs cost $20 each. And we only have a budget of $10,000 because this is a war on American soil. And if there's one thing the United States chucks its money at, you, United States chucks its money at, ooh, I can't speak today. If there's one thing the United States chucks its money at, it's wars that are somewhere else. So you've got 10 grand to fight this thing. And the first thing we want to know is what's the budget equation for this situation? Well, you probably haven't seen this term before, budget equation, but it's pretty straightforward. And once you see me do it for this problem, it'll make sense for you for other problems. The idea behind the budget equation is this. We know we're going to have expenditures for guns, and we know we're going to have expenditures for hugs. And we know that the total expenditure is going to be 10,000. And so the idea is that the total money for guns plus the total money for hugs should add up to the total amount of money we're allowed to spend. $10,000 is the total amount of money we're allowed to spend, and that's going to get divided up between how much we spend on guns and how much we spend on hugs. All right, so that's cool, and now to finish the budget equation, all we have to do is actually come up with the math expression for these two blocks of stuff. And look, here's how much we spend on guns. Let's say g is our variable for number of guns, and let's say h is our variable for number of hugs. Well, if we spend $1,000 per gun, then how much we spend on guns is simply $1,000 times the number of guns that we buy. And if we spend $20 per hug, then the total amount of money we spend on hugs is $20 for every hug, which is $20 times the number of hugs we get. And that total should still be equal to 10,000. 
And this is it, people. This is exactly the budget constraint or the budget equation for the fact that we're going to fight zombie Superman using guns and hugs. Um, and if you're going to write down a budget equation, it's always going to look like this. It's always going to be a number times your first variable plus a number times your second variable. I'm going to erase that because that looks like a minus. Um, a number plus your first variable plus a number times your second variable equals the total. So using this equation, we're going to have some questions that say crap like, what is the maximum possible number of guns? And what's the maximum possible number of hugs? Well, if you think about it, the maximum number of guns is just going to happen when we don't spend any money at all on hugs. So maximum number of guns is going to be zero hugs. So that way we have the most amount of money left over for guns. And so if we know it's going to be zero hugs, then we just go all the way back to this formula and we plug in zero for hugs. A thousand guns, thousand dollars per gun, plus twenty dollars multiplied by zero hugs equals ten thousand. This is a thousand G equals ten thousand. And now divide by a thousand and you get G equals ten. So what this means is the maximum number of guns is when hugs is zero. And when hugs is zero, we can solve for G and we get G equals 10. So the maximum possible number of guns is 10 guns. Same idea for hugs. The maximum number of hugs happens when we have zero guns. So we go back up here. We look at this original equation. Um, let's scratch all this out real quick. All right, we've got zero guns. And so this is what happens when we plug in zero for guns. That term becomes zero. Now we divide both sides by 20. And we get hugs equals 500. So the maximum number of hugs happens when we don't spend any money on guns. And in that case, we get 500 hugs. That's pretty cool, I guess. And then all we're doing is using the equation we came up with to answer the question. Last question is, if I buy nine guns, how many hugs can I have? And this is the exact same idea. We plug this into the equation. A thousand times the number of guns plus 20 times the number of hugs equals 10,000. This is 9,000 plus 20H equals 10,000. Solving this puppy, bring the 9,000 over to the other side. We get 20H equals 1,000. And now divide by 20, and how many hugs we get is um, 50. Bam. Nine guns. 50 hugs. That sounds like a thing. Nine guns, 50 hugs. Maybe a band name. Yeah. All right. So if any of you make a band called Nine Guns, 50 Hugs and actually produce an album, you get an A in the class. Keep that in mind. But for now, we're done, people. This is everything you need to know about depreciation and about budget constraints. So I will talk to you in the future.